morning. Good morning. morning. Be still and know that God is God, so that he may be exalted in his world, may be exalted in our lives. We turn to our bulletin, the middle portion. We share in an opening meditation on this homecoming Sunday. As we extend a warm welcome to those who are visiting with us, those who are returning from vacation and rest, those who are returning from their studies, we pray that as a community of faith, renewed and refreshed by the power and spirit of Almighty God, we may walk with each other, serve each other, as empowered by God's Holy Spirit. And so I invite us now to share in the opening meditation. Come in. Come in and sit down. You are a part of the family. You know the reason why you came, yet no reason can explain. God is with us in this place, like a mother's warm embrace. Together, God has called us. And how can we but raise our voices, echoing God's praise? God has called us. And let us answer with our lives. God has changed us. And how can we but live as servants of the Spirit's gift? God has changed us. And let us worship with our lives. God has charged us. And how can we but ask for wisdom for the Christly task? God has charged us, and let us labor with our lives. God has called us, and how can we but raise our voices, echoing God's praise? God has called us, and let us answer with our lives. We sing from the provincial hymnal number 389, 389.
of service continues on page 100 of the prayer book. Page 100 of the prayer book. We extend a warm welcome to one and all on this Sunday where we observe the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. The lessons are those appointed for proper 19, page 100. Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. Page 101 and following. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia. together. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God, to your hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. This morning we shall have two colleagues. Proper 19, proper 19, we're on page 178, and the second will be page 201, page 201, Roman numeral 3, for all Christians in their vocation, proper 19, and then page 201, for all Christians in their vocation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Proper 19, we pray together, O oh God. Because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now page 201 for all Christians in the vocation. We continue to pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Invite us now to sit as we share in the ministry of the Word. reflects the words of, of Isaiah, I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheek to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 to 9a. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear. I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed, 116, verse 1 through to 8. The psalm appointed, Psalm 116, verse 1 through to 8. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low, and he helped me. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Illumination for the second lesson. In today's epistle, James set forth a carefully constructed organized argument about the need for those who would call themselves members of the community of faith to tame their tongues. A reading from the letter of James, chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we, if we but put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look to at ships, though they are so large and it takes strong winds to drive them, Yet they are guided by very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. 
So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a word of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, as is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue. A restless, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual hymn from the provincial hymnal number 638, provincial hymnal 638, in token that thou shalt not fail. you. A continuation of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to Mark, the eighth chapter, beginning to read at the 27th verse. Glory. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist and others Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. 
He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are set in your mind not on divine things but on human things. He called a crowd of his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. My friends, the Gospel of Christ. From the Mission Praise number 980. 980. Feel the warmth of your 
with you? Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we pray that even now as we meditate and reflect that your spirit would speak to our hearts and to our lives. We seek renewal and grace and in some instances we need transformation so that we are drawn to that place where you dictate, you govern, you rule our hearts and our lives. Pray for grace, O oh Lord, that I may speak in your name. You who are God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Together we say, Amen. Please be seated. Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? It is right that Jesus is meeting with his disciples and seeking to find out from them their understanding of him. And this in the context of our liturgical flow is very important because over the last couple of weeks we have been looking at Jesus experiencing from people different things or people having different expectations of him. We had the bread discourse where he turned five loaves and two fish into so much food to feed thousands of people and they wanted to make him king but in the midst of it, Ill, midst of it all they wanted it for the wrong reasons. As Jesus is here sharing with his disciples he turned the question. He asked well what do people say? And it is one thing that we can understand that these are the things that people say. You're Elijah, you're John, you're one of the prophets. Jesus turned the question personal and he asks, who do you say that I am? What is your response? What is your encounter with Jesus like? What does he mean to you? And in the context of this body politic we call the church, in the context of this movement of people, we now need that individual response. Peter jumped ahead of the pack, as he normally would, and he said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. You are the Christ, you are the anointed one. And Jesus said to him, well, it is not flesh and blood that reveal this to you. This is something special that you have been given. And so Peter spoke not just for himself, but Peter spoke for a community of faith. And that is why it's important for us to understand that when we hear people talk about the church of God, we do not think of the church as being built on Peter, not Peter the man. But the faith that Peter expressed, and what was that faith? That Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Some parts of Christianity will seek to affirm that it is Peter on which the church was built. Far from it. The church was built on the faith. Hence Paul was able to say, if Christ had not died, which is the mystery of our faith. And what is the mystery of our faith? Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. And if that is in vain, that our faith is futile. We do not rely on Peter as an individual. We rely on the faith that he expressed not only for himself, but for a community, a people who said, yes, we acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. Now this thing about the community becomes instructive because it means now first we have to make an individual response to say that I want to be a part of this community that identifies Jesus Christ and walk with him as Lord and Savior of my life and of our life. So there is now a personal response within the context of community that I will follow this Savior as Lord. The following of Jesus calls us into a life of self-emptying. The cross this morning, Jesus comes and he says, if anyone would come after me, if anyone would follow me, that person must deny himself or herself take up that cross and follow me. When we say we're taking up the cross, 
We are saying that there's a sense of self-emptying, a sense of surrendering not only our will, but our way, our thinking, our entire beings into the presence and the hand of Almighty God. Jesus says, you must deny yourself. You must not focus on your own earthly way of thinking. There must be a transformative experience, a transformative mindset that now seeks to govern and to dictate your way of living. And so we are called now as a people, we recognize each other as being a part of that body that seeks to follow Jesus Christ as Lord. It is what the cross does to us. The cross envelops, it brings us together. So one of the prayers which I had reason to quote on Friday morning when we remember St. Cyprian of Carthage and then yesterday the Feast of the Holy Cross is to offer this prayer. Almighty God, you stretch out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we reaching forth our hands in love may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. So first up, Christ stretched out his hands of love to draw us and we have responded within this body politic called the Anglican Church. Not just the Anglican Church, but the Anglican Church rooted in this island of Anguilla, within the wider scope of a diocese, within the wider scope of a province, within the wider scope of a communion. So there are 44 provinces that make up this communion. From Australia, to New Zealand, to Iceland, to Brazil, here in the West Indies, all Anglicans responding to worship God. Seeking to follow the way of the cross that envelops, it draws us. Now the thing about drawing us is that we come with our own mindsets. We come with our own idiosyncrasies. We come with our anxieties and our fears and our doubts. We come with so many other things, but once we encounter Christ... There is transformation. If we fully encounter and fully embrace Christ, then there is a change, what we call metanoia, that sets in. It means our outlook is different and so we look at things from a divine perspective. Paul, writing to the church at Colossae, he said, if Christ has been raised, which is the foundation of your faith, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again, if Christ has been raised, then your mind must be set on heavenly things. Your mind must be set on a thinking that is from above, not the thinking of the world. So there are certain precepts, there are certain practices, there are certain teachings that will be applied to your life that speaks to your new life in Jesus Christ. And that becomes very important. It is called a life in the cross, the way of the cross. How do we live with the cross? And there are two things which stand before us this morning, and we will have to decide on which side of the divide we face. And the first thing is that when we enter into the way of the cross, we see each other as sisters and brothers. As I said earlier, we have entered a community of faith. We are all walking this road together, fellow pilgrims journeying together. And in the first lesson for today, Isaiah says, give me a tongue that I may give a word of encouragement. So it leads me now to suggest to us that in this community of faith, as a people of God, we are called to encourage one another. We are called to build up one another. We are called now to share one another's burdens. From the cross, Jesus looked at Mary, his mother, and he looked at John, the beloved disciple whom he loved, and he said to Mary, woman, behold your son. Then he said to John, the beloved disciple, son, behold your mother. In that very moment, 
Christ was now creating a new family. A family not defined by bloodlines. A family that is not said to be, well, we are somehow related and so we have to trace the family tree. No one needs to get caught up in a genealogical exercise when it comes to Jesus Christ. Because through the blood of Christ on the cross, through the waters of baptism, where you and I have been signed and sealed with the cross, hence the hymn, in token that thou shalt not fear, we sign you with the cross of Jesus Christ. That says now, you have been initiated into something wonderful called the family of God. And in that family, there is support, there is encouragement, there is nurturing, there is lifting up. We are sisters and brothers because we are all part of the family. And hence, we can come into this place, or better yet, we should be able to come into this place and find hope. We should be able to come into this place and find brotherhood and sisterhood. We should be able to come into this place and know that the persons who are in the pews with me are people who are on this road of following Christ. So Isaiah says to us now, Lord bless me, give you, give me a tongue to offer a word of encouragement. There's a gentleman in the Acts of the Apostles by the name of Barnabas, St. Barnabas. And he was called son of encouragement. And his mission in the context of the disciples, the apostles, was always to encourage, to nurture, to build up, to support, to say, I am with you. And sad to say that many times, even within our church, we can't find that support. We do not encourage one another. We do not offer that soft spoken word that will build up. Isaiah comes and he says to us, let that word of encouragement be a part of our life as a people of God. How many of us intentionally say to the other person, I am here with you. I know what you're going through and I know the road is not easy, but I am here with you. I am here to help you out of the miracle. I'm here to, to, to support you and to say to you that all is not lost. I know what you're going through. And so I will call you. I will send the text. I will come and I will sit with you. I'll offer comforting words. And if I don't have any words because I'm short on words, I am going to hold, give me your hand. I'm going to hold your hand in a ministry of presence. And I'm going to sit and let you know that flesh and blood, that experiences life just like you are here with you. It is a challenge for us because our hearts now have not been transformed into the heart of the cross. The cross that speaks of God's love, God's compassion, God's mercy, God bringing us in Jesus Christ into a new relationship. That new relationship is that you are my sister or my brother. Last Sunday evening I sang it. God is my father. Jesus is my brother. The blessed Holy Spirit is my guide. I have a new relation. I have, I'm a new creation. The devil is no relation. I have a royal family in the sky. What? You're supposed to sing in meeting, man. Have a royal family. And that royal family is not in the sky. That royal family is us because you are made in God's image and likeness. You are made in God's image and likeness. You, Sister Retty, are made in God's image and likeness. And when we look at each other, what we are seeing are ambassadors, witnesses, testimonials of who God is and what he means to us. And therefore, we should be concerned about the other. But the flip side is that we've allowed selfishness to creep in. We've allowed ill will and hatred and malice to creep in. 
So James comes to us now and James tells us how easy it is for us to tear down one another. And what does James talk about? The tongue. That little thing that cannot be tamed. And uh, I don't know how many of you were in church two Sundays ago. And I know some of you skip out because 6.15, 7.15 in your service. So, um, can I, when you are going back to 6.15, we want 6.15. The, the pastor need rest, you know? <laughs> yeah, the pastor need rest. And don't tell anybody. I have another vacation in a number of years. Mm -hmm. So that service, one service, it does provide an opportunity for a little extra rest. I know I'm going to be up by 4.30. But at least I can say, let me lie down in the bed a little longer. <laughs> let me lie down a little longer. Two weeks ago, I raised for us that I disagree with James. I don't know if you remember. I said that when James talks about the tongue, anybody remember? When James talks about the tongue, James is not really talking about the tongue. The problem is not the tongue. The problem is the heart. Because the tongue becomes a weapon an instrument in the hand of the heart. James brings it alive today. So I, I actually thought about starting the mass. Leave people business alone. Leave people business to mind your own. Leave people business alone. Leave people business to mind your own. You're in my way like a rolling stone. But that's not the use for your teeth and your tongue. No, I'm a little off key this morning. But you get the gist. You get the gist. Because what happens is that our hearts have been so constructed to denigrating and tearing down that it's very easy for the tongue now to be involved instead of building up and offering words of comfort, tear down one another. And we're all a part of the family of God. We're all a part of this family, sisters and brothers. Paul says to us, rejoice with those who are rejoicing and weep with those who are weeping. But if our tongue now has been used to praise and glorify God because of our hearts are filled with joy at what he has done, why is it that we find it necessary to tear down one another? And the funny thing is we have people, Lord, we live by gossip. We chat, 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 and not things to build up. Ain't hey, pulling the punches this morning. Not things to build on. We tear down, and all we want to do is to just get a little whiff. Notice what I said. Just a little whiff of something negative about someone, and Lord, the whole anguilla now. We jump on the phone. And we jump with the text. And we on about who do what, whenever and whatever. A sister or brother falling down on the road. And we're not even saying, Lord, sister, I'm here for you. Let, let me help you out of that. What we do is that we, 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 we blow it up and we let everybody know. I saw a meme just the other day. And the meme I saw, someone is drowning. And you see all these people, instead of lending a hand, to pull out of the turbulent waters. And the interesting thing is the imagery is that you could just reach out your hand and lift the person up. But you see like about 10 persons standing around and they're with their cell phones and they're taking pictures. You see this thing called church? You see this thing called the body of Christ? We are called now to engage with each other. We're called to understand each other. Paul, while writing to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians 4, he says, do not let any unwholesome thing come out of your mouth. Speak only that which will build up and edify and lead others in their growth and development. And sometimes we are given over and over again to tear down, to pull down, to marginalize, and to bask in people's downfall. That can't be kingdom values. 
that can't be cross like values jesus said behold your son behold your mother new life is created in the cross and so if it is that somehow you are not given to understanding what it is to be in communion with the other if you don't understand what it is to have relations and bonds and sharing with the other then you need to wheel and come again you need to look at it from the perspective because all of us are in this together judas walked with them for a number of years judas walked with them for a number of years and judas turned and stabbed them in the back that's something similar in Antigua the other day. Politicians jumping. They walk with their friends, walk with their friends up to hours before. Or, um, I, no, I'm not going anywhere. And they turn and, 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 and suddenly, and people don't see a problem with it because it is a culture for today. Betrayal. Stab in the back. Pull down. The order of the day. There seems to be very little effort about support and encouragement and engagement. And yes, sometimes it needs a bit of frankness because if it is that my, my friend Anne offend me, I must be able to come and say, Anne with love, you have done me wrong. I won't go tell Lorraine. I won't go tell Selma. I won't go tell Nicola. I won't go tell... Um, I'm dead. I come to Anne and I say, Anne, this is what it is. But what happens is that we have that culture where we run to every single body to tell them, oh, what the person has done to us. And then when you go and tell all those people, those people meet you now. And instead of good morning, good afternoon, they're giving you cold shoulder. They don't know the story. They don't know the full story. But they give you the cold shoulder. Oh, they let you know. <laughs> Hello. And they don't understand. And if I may throw in there, sometimes some people can be extremely ungrateful. You do 99 things to them. And you can't do the one to make the 100. And you're the worst person in the world. Can I get an amen? Yeah. I'm begging for it, but I just do it sarcastically. Because it's the truth. There's some people you're there for them all the time when things are going well. And when you're going through a rough patch, you can't find them. You can't find them. This is not what church life is about. It is about us understanding ourselves emptying and allowing the love of Christ. The love that is agapeic. By that I mean the love that is in spite of our differences, whether they are political, social, and I'm speaking specifically to our community of faith. The others we deal with another time. But what are we and who are we? And what makes it even more interesting, friends, is that we are homogenous. We're all from the same sheepfold. So it should make it easier, shouldn't it? Or maybe it is that familiarity breeds contempt. I don't know. Because we have the same sheepfold, the same geographic location, the same historical boundaries, the same genealogical lines, then there should be something that holds us together and accounts with more. But even more, the presence and the power of Jesus Christ. Us in the waters of baptism, us through the blood that he shed on the cross, should draw us to that place where we see the Imago Dei, the image of God on each other's life. But then as I said, maybe it is that familiarity breeds contempt. And so, I, I, I know you, I know who you are. I have no ties to you, whatever, it does the same, and, and blase. But the truth is, James is warning us about the use of, of the tongue fueled by the heart. 
And so if you're tearing down people, stop it. If you're gossiping on people, stop it. If you're carrying news on people in your place of work, stop it. That is not Christ-like. The Christ-like thing, the way of the cross says, my sister or my brother, all is not well with you. And I'm not here in judgment because judgment means I'm casting you out. I'm condemning you to that place where you're ostracized. I am here to tell you out of love that all is not well. And we're not always willing to do that. I know that some people will not take it very well. God knows sometimes when I preach, I know some of you don't take it very well. <laughs> I don't have to ask. Like, I no, I hear the stories. I hear stories and believable, credible stories. Yeah, because that is what the word of God does. It comes to us and it pricks our consciences. It comforts the afflicted and it afflicts the comforted. Because we need more and more to change and become more and more of who and what Christ wants us to be. And so the way of the cross now, we have been summoned into it. We have been drawn into it. And there are certain things that speak to our life. And one of them has to do with building up versus tearing down. Engaging versus war. Encouraging. So when somebody's child do well, and just maybe my child has not done so well, does it stop me from offering support and encouragement to say, well done? I want to stop and think about it. Because more often than not, if we look at lives, you realize that we embrace more of what James says to us about the tongue than what Isaiah says for the people of God. And if you and I are on the way of the cross, the cross is about love. It is about compassion. Jesus says, deny yourself. Take it up and follow me. It means there are other people who come. There are other people on this road, in this congregation, Maybe it has implications for pure ministry. We sit in a pew with other people and you don't see them for two weeks. Do you go and ask them or try to find out what happened to you? What about when people are sick? And this has become, I don't want to say a peeve of mine, but it's one of those things I've found out. That sometimes when we're up and about, we don't want to look for anybody. We're not concerned about anybody. But as soon as we fall sick and we can't make it out, or we make all sorts of noise, or the church and people don't come to look for us. Did you look for anyone? Christ says, in as much as you did it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters. And let's face it. Given our small nature, do we, do we reach out? Do we step out and say, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Is everything okay? Is everything all right? But then, don't get that. And as soon as we reach there, no one comes. How many of us here when somebody's in the hospital, we make a trek and go and say, you know what? I'm here to visit you. But we're in the hospital. The priest goes. Mandated once a week to go. Sometimes ends up twice, three. And you go for one person and you end up encountering. Went there, I think it was on Thursday. I went on Thursday. Just to see two persons. Which would only take about 15 minutes. Ended up saying about an hour and a half. Not necessarily with all members, but the people who just needed to hear where the nurse pulled and said, come, 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 I need you to go see this person. And I went by the grace of God. Wonderful thing after Jean, I was able to go sit down and a nice hot piping coffee. <laughs> Never tasted and needed more than Thursday. It is part of it. But how many of us realistically reach out to the other person? Because you see the cross now on our brow, it demands that we are looking out for one another. It's not if, but or maybe. 
So Isaiah comes now a word of encouragement, a life of encouragement, a life of support, a life of saying that engage, we are in this together. As against James. And somehow, because a lot of times within the human spirit, we love negativity. My father used to say we love ugly. As humans, we love ugly. So the things now that will tear down and pull down. As soon as, as I said earlier with, transformation is needed. And so Jesus says, if you want to follow me, take up your cross. And that cross removes self from the equation, at least self-centeredness from the equation. So that you're not important. But Christ is now the center. And in that is love and compassion and mercy and care for the other. I'm reaching out to the other because what? You are my sister. You are my brother. Come we that love the Lord. We are marching to Zion together. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. We are together. And we're not together to have someone fall off along the road. We are together to say to Velda, listen here, the foot is bad. Come, I'm going to lift you. I am your crutch. I'm going to lead you on. It is to say to Preston, all may not be well, but I am here. Come, pull along because we're in this together. It is to say to Lindsay, listen here, you may be challenged at this time, but no, I am with you and I'm not going to leave no one left behind. Because we are sisters and we are brothers. We have embraced Christ and his cross. A cross that brings us together in love. But it means, friends, we have to deny ourselves and allow Christ to take control. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. At the right hand of the Father, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Invite us now to sit or kneel as we are led in the intercessions, the prayers of the faithful. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Hear our prayers and listen to the words of our mouths as we bring before you our thanks, hopes, and fears, our joys and concerns. We pray for the church in Anguilla, our diocese, and throughout the world. We pray for all who call themselves Christians, that they may go forward in unity and strength. Help us to respect the beliefs of others, even if we do not share them to celebrate what we have in common, and to accept our differences. Guide us all in our ministries as we live each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, restore our passion for what is good and right. With the love of truth, fill those who influence the minds of others. Give to journalists and broadcasters the desire to make known the good as well as the bad and to avoid false sensations that can harm the innocent. Establish your just and gentle rule throughout the world, especially where there is conflict, where peace seems so far away and so many have lost everything, even the faint of hope of a peaceful future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, help us always to practice unselfishness as we genuinely try to be the servant of all as our Lord commanded. Shield us in our families and in our relationships from hasty words and disregard of truth. We pray for all who are suffering from slander and false accusations, 
for those unjustly accused through malice or error. Give courage to all who are called to witness to their faith in difficult situations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you gave your prophet Isaiah an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. Help us to comfort the weary and those who are ill with a call or visit or a message through social media or the post office. Help us also to be constant in our prayer for friends and family. Lord, in your mercy, and hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for those who have died alone, unnoticed, and unloved. We pray that the souls of the departed who love this world excessively may be pardoned in the kingdom where true joys are to be found. We commend all the departed to your merciful love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, as we leave this place today and return to our homes and loved ones, draw near to us. Strengthen our faith, deepen our love for you and for our neighbors, and open our eyes to the wonder of your creation. Merciful Father, accept these, these prayers for the sake, sake of your Son, our, our Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Invite us now to turn to page 123 of the prayer book. And it is there that the act of penitence begins. We are reminded if we should say we have no sin, then we're deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins. He will cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. And so invited to, we invited to bring before Almighty God all our shortcomings and our challenges, the wrongs we have committed against him, against each other, and against the self. We are going to confess our sins, but in confessing, we resolve that we will reach out to those whom we have wronged. They may not be here in this worship experience. And so a text message or a phone call maybe even a visiting person, to apologize and to tell them that we are sorry. We are also resolving that we will let go of the mistakes of the past and those things which others or that other person holds over our head will become inconsequential because we have a new life in Jesus Christ. And finally, we will let go of our own mistakes. We sometimes impose that sort of Damocles on our life because we are not willing to move on from whatever it is we did many years ago. The act of penitence challenges us. It calls us to let go and to allow God to create something new and wonderful in our hearts and our lives. The top of page 124, in humility and in contriteness of heart, we pray in confession together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy in us and forgive us that you may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sin. Confirm and strengthen all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We stand for the greeting of the peace. The bottom of page 124, Form A. We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit, we all baptize into one body and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you.
Home Family Funding. And we would like to welcome everyone worshiping with us, especially those who are visiting with us. If you're a visitor, kindly indicate by a show of hand. We continue with the notices for today and the rest of the week. Today at 6 p.m., choral recital, caption, Jesus, prophet, priest, and king. For the recital this evening, it will be one with a difference. So we are inviting all of you to come back and join with us. And to please bring your provincial hymnals with you. Oh, mission praise as well. Okay. And mission praise. <laughs> there will be a contribution, so. Love offering. A, an offering. Love a love offering. offering. Love offering. <laughs> love offering. A love offering will be accepted. Tomorrow, Monday, September 16th, in the morning communion at Wall Blake, Little Harbor, and South Hill. Tuesday, September 17th, communion at Northside and Nursing Homes. At 7.15 p.m., Mass with Hymns at St. Andrew's Church. On Wednesday, September 18th, Communion at South Valley, Sacrosis, and Roaches Hill. Thursday, September 19th, at 6 a.m., Matins and Mass at St. Augustine's Church. At 6 p.m., Joint Choir Practice. Friday, September 20th, at 6 a.m., Matins and Mass. On Saturday, the Feast of St. Matthew the Evangelist, there will be Mass at 6.30 a.m. As is the norm, everyone is invited to make some time and come and share in this Mass as we remember the life, work, and witness of this saint. Next Sunday, September the 22nd, the 18th Sunday after Pentecost, proper 20, at 6.15 a.m., Mass with hymns, at 8.15 a.m., Song Mass. At 6 p.m., Gospel Classics Program. This is the second performance at St. Augustine's Church. A love offering of 10 U.S. will be accepted. Everyone is invited to attend. Please write your comments about the Sunday School program held last Friday. Names are not necessary. Sheets are at the back of the church. So remember as you go out to write your comments. Additional notices. The season of creation 2024 is in full swing and continues until Friday, 4th October the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. He is the patron saint of the environment. And a challenge is being laid on to all parishioners. All of us are asked to take up this challenge, which is to plant a tree during this time. Remember that trees provide us with oxygen. <coughs> and this oxygen is an Remember that trees provide us with oxygen and utilize the carbon dioxide within the atmosphere. So let us all take up this challenge and remember to plant a tree during this time. We extend heartfelt sympathy to those relatives and friends of Robert Paragon. Let us remember them in our prayers. Those are the notices for today and the rest of the week. Thank you, Teacher Gloria. Just to um, piggyback on something she mentioned, and that is the season of creation. Uh, we realize that we are laden with quite a bit of heat. Everywhere we turn, 
is extremely hot. The sun is upon us. Um, it's okay for us to use our air condition to turn them all the way up. But we can somehow aid in a, you know, stemming the tide of what we know as global warming. And so with the season of creation, Anglicans are joining with our Roman Catholics, as well as the Eastern Orthodox Church and several other churches. And we observe in a month and about four days, we reflect on intentionally our stewardship as our, our ministry as stewards of God's creation. And so the challenge for each parishioner is to plant a tree. I want us to take it up, just to plant a tree. It's very important. Just within this period, plant a tree. If 500 of us plant a tree that we're going to nurture and allow it to grow, it'll make a difference. Because our ozone layer is depleted. It is going. It's why the sun's rays are making the place so hot. That is why we get the warnings. We may not be able to reverse all of it, but we can slow it down. A big part of that is to plant trees. There's this indiscriminate thing of cutting down trees, of grading off land and everything. Let us make the reverse. And if you can plant a tree, especially one of those that will grow big, maybe a, a salsa tree, a, a mango tree or something, that will create a difference because certainly um, our integrated science 101 tells us that the trees need carbon dioxide to produce fruit and to grow and they produce oxygen and what do we need most of Therese you're the recently graduated from school we <laughs> I'm teasing you we need oxygen some carbon dioxide is important but we need oxygen that comes from us and we are responsible because you know it's one of those things that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and God made man and woman people and he placed them in the garden Genesis tells us and God said to till the soil he says to look after this garden this is the garden we've been given earth and we have to ask ourselves have we been doing our part to look after this garden? We look for food from elsewhere. Maybe one of the reasons or one of the things we need to think about, how do we support our local farmers now? Because we know that they're not giving any special hormones and so on to our chickens and to our eggs and to all our fruits and vegetables. We have a responsibility. And so I, I want to challenge us to plant a tree, each one of us, to go dig our hand in the soil and plant that tree. Nurture it, water it, mulch it when we have to, give it some of those things, put around it some of our waste and all of that and we see how quick it blossoms and know that we'll be doing it not only for ourselves but for our children and our children's children. So inviting please let us take up that challenge. Uh, finally um, for those who took part, Teacher Gloria mentioned this, the sheets at the back. On Friday afternoon, we, have a, we had a wonderful experience with our young people and the Sunday school. The Sunday school expo, they call Tea and Talk. And the young people displayed some of what is possible in Sunday school. Sunday school is restarting. We want to encourage you as parents to be a part of the lives of the children by encouraging them to go to Sunday school. Teacher, I think it was teacher Shonda, when she spoke on Friday afternoon, she said these words, and I'm paraphrasing. She said, parents, bring your children out to Sunday school. And when you drop them off over there for Sunday school, don't run home. Just stay next door and share in a wonderful worship experience. And then when worship is over, you and your child or children can go home and while on the way home you will discuss what happened in Sunday school and what happened in church. I couldn't put it any better. Don't just drop them off. We need them there and with all that is going on with our young people, Sunday school is needed so that we could help you 
we could become more a part of that village that will help our young people to grow with respect for God, respect for themselves, and respect for others. If you took part in that experience, there are forms at the back, fill them out, we need your feedback. And please, you don't have to put your name on, don't need a name, just want you to write the comments, tell us what you like, what you probably didn't like, what you think we should do, what we could do to make it better. That is at the back. So please make sure that once you're there, you use those forms. Birthdays today during the course of this week. Going once, going twice. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we give you thanks and praise for this day. We thank for the gift of life. Your servants are celebrating another year because of your grace, your love, and your compassion. You have poured out an abundance of blessings upon them, and most of all, they have life. We pray that they give praise, honor, and glory to your holy name for all that you have done for them. We pray they would have a wonderful day, celebrate with family and friends and those who are near and dear to them. Bless them with many more years of life. But in that moment, in those moments, we pray that they would order their lives according to your word to follow you, to serve you each and every day. These mercies and more we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Bless the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Happy birthday. Offertory hymn from the provincial hymnal, or offertory hymn from the provincial hymnal, number 346, summoned by the God who made us. 346, the provincial hymnal.
126 Prebi, page 126 Prebi. Father, we offer you the gifts which you have given us, the bread, the wine, and the money. With them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become through your Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice as the bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ. So may we and all your people become channels of your love to the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father, almighty, everlasting God, the preface of Christian initiation, the top of page 130. Because in Jesus Christ, our Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who will forever sing this hymn to proclaim, the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. As we invite you to sit or kneel, we shall be using prayer C, page 137. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing and acceptable to Almighty God, and that this sacrifice offered at my hands may be for the praise and glory of his holy name and for the benefit of his holy church. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks to you, Lord, our God, for the goodness and the love you have made known to us in creation. In calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and the redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, 
out of sickness into health, out of bondage into freedom, and out of death into life. On the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Whenever you eat it, you do this for the remembrance of me. Choose you, my Lord, I dear God, oh, make me love thee more and more. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks to you, he blessed it. He gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, you do this for the remembrance of me. Choose you, my Lord, and dear God, and make me love you more and more. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. With our palms open and face in heavenward, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. shall we give to the Lord in return for all the blessings he has given unto us. Let us now lift up the cup of salvation as we call upon the name of the Lord saying, Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. Thou shalt come under my roof. But speak the word only and my soul shall be healed. Amen. During the administration of the blessed sacrament, we shall sing the middle portion of the bulletin softly and tenderly. And then, if needed, from the mission praise number 60.
the middle of page 148, we find the second prayer of thanksgiving, the middle of page 148. The Lord be with you. We pray together, eternal God and heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your son jesus christ our lord amen we invite our children and young people to stand and see some children with us this morning children and young people the hymn mission praise number 272 mission praise 272 children and young people Parents do make sure they are seen into a hymn book that they can sing as well. 272. Let us pray, Almighty and eternal God. We thank you for the youngsters you have placed in our path, in our life, within our community of faith. We pray that we as adults may be good examples to them, to help them to grow in the fear and fervor of your name. We pray that we'd always be there 
to give them encouraging word, to help them to grow, to become responsible to you and to the community in which they live. As they continue to navigate life with its challenges, its trials, and its ups and downs, we pray that your ever-abiding spirit may be with them to strengthen, to guide, to lead. Indeed, to grant them that presence of discernment that they're able to choose to walk with you, to serve you, and to affirm you as Lord of their life. We pray that you'd continue to watch over them, especially as they share in their educational journey. Grant them wisdom, grant them understanding, grant them a sense of analysis and expression so that their lives may be a testimony to your power, your presence, and your grace. His mercies and more we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our friends, we pray that the spirit of truth may lead into all truth. May it give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the word and works of God. And now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you, remembering those whom you will love and care for now and forevermore. Amen. And so a recessional hymn from the provincial hymnal, number 515, 515. Come ye that love the Lord and let your joys be known. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching to Zion.
The Lord be with you. Let us now go in peace to love each other and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Have a wonderful day today.